Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com. And instead of just talking about one tool today, we're gonna to take a closer look at one of my favorite combos. It comes in two different varieties, each of which use a different technique to achieve a similar result. The first one starts with a hard brush and I paint in a solid shape, concentrating on the edges. Then I switch to a soft eraser and erase away what I don't need. The other way starts with a soft brush in which I paint down a big soft shape and then I switch to a hard eraser and I carve away what I don't need. Soft brush, hard eraser. Hard brush, soft eraser. You'll see both give me a similar result, which is a brush mark that has both a hard edge and a soft transition. And this is something that happens over and over in paintings. Were I blocking in the form shadows on a sketch like this, I might start by painting in the hard edge that I know I'm going to keep and then erasing away that soft change in form. Start with a hard brush, fill it in as if it were a very graphic shadow, and then use that soft airbrush eraser to explain the form change. Start with the hard, erase with the soft. Start with the hard, erase with the soft. Over and over. So let's see how that other one fits in here. Let's say I want to paint the soft shadows cast by each individual scale. Here I'll start with a soft brush and then erase away with a hard brush. Start with soft, erase away with hard. In this case right here, I'm actually staying on one layer the entire time, but I'm just switching between brush and eraser in order to achieve that balance between hard and soft edges. Lay down a soft shadow and then carve out that hard edge. Soft shadow, carve the hard edge. Add a soft shadow, once again, carve that sharp edge away. As I said, these are two techniques that I use all the time when I'm painting. But just like any hard practice skill, this is reliant on some foundation ideas. The first is just understanding light and shadow, and really the only way to get good at that is to do still lifes or to do observational drawing and painting. I spend plenty of time talking about this on the site and in the paid videos, but this is crucial. Even if you understand the keyboard shortcuts, you have to understand light to be able to paint this way. But just from a Photoshop standpoint, assuming you know how to paint light, this technique is very keyboard shortcut centric. So let's just take another look at it and see which keyboard shortcuts I wasn't mentioning. The first is just being able to switch between brush, eraser, and the pan tool. You'll see I'm doing lots of panning, zooming, and then switching between brush and eraser. To make this even more effective, I actually use the spring-loaded keys option, which I've explained in another linked video, where I only hold down the E key and then let go of the E key and it immediately snaps me back to the active brush tool. This is especially useful when I am quickly rotating between brush and eraser. Saves you a key press. Another essential one is to be able to change the brush diameter by holding down Alt and right click and moving left and right. This is something that I don't even think about anymore, but changing the brush diameter is essential for this technique. And so much of this involves painting extra and then erasing some away, and that's just so much easier if you don't have to worry about messing up the rest of the artwork. So for this, I have to add a new layer as a keyboard shortcut and merge down so I don't have too many layers at the end of the day. So clearly this whole process looks simple and it's essentially invisible, but a lot of that is thanks to this list of keyboard shortcuts. I've customized these for my own workflow, but these are the defaults. So I encourage you to give this a try for yourself, and if any of it's unfamiliar, do check out the rest of the free library, because I have lots of videos on individual techniques. Have fun painting!